This is my 2019 MacBook Pro with an Intel i9. And this is a 2023 MacBook Air with an M2. In this video, I'm going to compare these two computers and let you know which one you should buy. All right, first thing we're going to do is go over the specs and pricing of these two MacBooks. First one is my 2019 MacBook Pro. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is an Intel i9. New in 2019, you would have paid $2,799 for this laptop. I purchased this one a little over a year ago for $1,000. And from the research that I have done, it appears that they're still anywhere between $800 and $1,000, depending on the condition. It's got a 9th Gen 8-core i9, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 2666 megahertz. It's got a terabyte of storage. It has a 16-inch widescreen, 3072 by 1920 resolution, and 226 pixels per inch. And it also has... 100 watt lithium polymer 11 hour battery for graphics this has an amd radeon pro 5500m 4 gigabytes as for the 2023 macbook air m2 it has obviously the m2 processor you would pay 1299 dollars at the apple store if you bought it today it's got eight cores four of them are high performance cores and four of them are efficiency cores this one has 8 gigabytes of unified memory, 256 gigabytes of storage. It has a 15.3 inch 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 2880 by 1864 resolution at 224 pixels per inch. And its battery is a 66 and a half watt lithium polymer battery, which Apple says will last anywhere between 15 and at 18 hours. The graphics on this MacBook Air are powered by an Apple GPU with 10 cores. Now we'll dive in to some benchmarks. I'm going to start by running Geekbench 6 on both of these. I'm going to be doing both with the power adapters plugged in and we'll be going over all of the benchmark scores and comparing them at the end of the video. go ahead and follow up that benchmark test with the Geekbench 6 GPU benchmark. On to the next test which will be Cinebench 2024. Next up is going to be the Unigen Valley benchmark. And 
And our final benchmark is going to be the Black Magic Disk Speed Test. <laughs> So let's take a look at these results. I must admit, there are three scores that shocked me. The Geekbench compute scores are heavily in favor of the M2. I expected this. In fact, the M2 performs 87% better on this benchmark than the i9 MacBook Pro. Now the metal score is one that surprised me. I thought there would be a chance my MacBook Pro would take the gold in this category. However, the M2 had a 30% stronger score than my MacBook Pro. The Cinebench scores are about where I thought they would be, with the M2 having 84% better single core performance over my MacBook Pro. However, the multi-core score is much less of a win for the M2. It only delivers 10% better performance than the MacBook Pro. Overall, in the Cinebench test, the M2 delivered better performance at an average increase of 47%. The Unigen Valley benchmark produced another very tight competition with the M2 only performing 14% better than the MacBook Pro on both single and multi-core performance. And finally, the Blackmagic disk speed test was most shocking to me. My MacBook Pro was 7% faster on reading and a whopping 77% faster write speed. I was so shocked, I ran the test on the M2 three additional times and still received almost identical results. If anyone has any ideas why the MacBook Pro would have better read-write speeds, please let me know. To summarize the benchmarks, including the disk speed test, the M2 averages nearly 31% better performance over my 2019 MacBook Pro. Excluding the disk speed test, the M2 jumps all the way up to 47% better performance over my MacBook Pro. Something to note, the M2 has a significant better single core performance over the i9. Averages roughly 67% better single core performance across all of the tests. I've prepared a brief pros and cons list between the M2 MacBook Air and the i9 MacBook Pro. The biggest pro for me is the increased battery life, which is 63% better than my 2019 MacBook Pro. The other obvious huge pro is the fact that it pretty much spanked my MacBook Pro in the benchmarks. You will also enjoy the benefits of macOS updates for years to come. Finally, to get all this, it's only $300 more than my MacBook Pro. I put an asterisk next to the price because my workflow would require me to have one terabyte of storage and I would probably choose to get 16 gigabytes of RAM. Therefore, if I were purchasing an M2 MacBook Air, the total cost after the storage and RAM upgrades is $1,899. That leads me to the cons of the MacBook Air. The first being that it only has 256 gigabytes internal storage at the $1,299 price. Along with that, the storage and memory upgrades aren't cheap with each RAM increase costing $200, as well as each storage upgrade also costing $200. Finally, for some, the fact that there is less gaming support than on the Intel Max could be a con for some. I hesitated to list this because it seems like more and more titles are supporting Apple Silicon each day. As for my MacBook Pro, the obvious biggest pro is the price point. They are cheaper 
than a MacBook Air M2. You will also temporarily enjoy more support for games, particularly from Steam. Another big pro is you can boot directly into Windows 10, whereas you must use virtualization on all Apple Silicon. I personally use Parallels Virtual Windows already on my MacBook, so this isn't a big deal for me. The final pro for the i9 MacBook Pro is if you are patient and search diligently, you can find much higher RAM and a better GPU at the $1,000 price point. However, even with a better spec i9, it will still lose the benchmark war to the M2. The biggest con for the i9 MacBook Pro is that it's becoming dated and will probably lose update support sometime in 2024. For most of us, these two cons alone are enough for us to rule out the i9 MacBook Pro. To sum all of this up, in my opinion, all signs point to Apple Silicon and the MacBook Air M2. Apple's made it clear that their silicon processors are the future, and I personally believe that they are superior in every way to the Intel processor Max. I will be upgrading my MacBook around the first of the year, and I will most likely be purchasing a MacBook Pro with either the M1 Pro or M2 Pro, depending on where I find the best deal on the used market. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I'm committed to publishing a video once a week. Do you guys agree with my thoughts on the Intel MacBook Pro versus the M2 MacBook Air? Let me know in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you all next video.